right, now here we are in the Cerner EHR. We can see our patient, Dwayne Caldwell. He's a 56-year-old man who lives in Florida, and today he's visiting the emergency department for an onset of symptoms that he believes might be due to COVID-19. Dwayne's chief complaint is documented as fever, loss of taste, headache, and malaise. During intake, the physician notes Dwayne's occupation. He's a clerk at a local grocery store. And with that in mind, the physician will go ahead and place an order for a coronavirus panel. Once that panel is sent to the lab, we find out that Dwayne did test positive for COVID-19. A lab technician will result that COVID panel. And as soon as a result is entered, in the background, an EICR or an electronic initial case report is triggered in the background with no disruption to the provider's workflow. The automation of this process ensures that an organization is meeting its reporting requirements. And once that EICR is triggered, it'll be sent over to Ames for processing. The Ames platform is where the interoperability happens. The platform connects to healthcare organizations through networks like eHealth Exchange, Fair Quality, and Commonwealth using Direct or XDR. For this demonstration, Ames is connected to Cerno using Direct. The first thing we do with the EICR is to validate it for structure and some of the necessary data elements. If the EICR is not valid, we create a reportability response with all the errors in it and send it back to the sender so they can fix it. One thing to note is that this process is not specific to Cerna or Epic because the ECR is a, is a standard that many EHRs are implementing. All the valid EICRs go to RCKMS for decision support. As mentioned, when COVID-19 was entered into the EHR, it matched a lowing code for lab results and triggered reporting to Florida Public Health. But that process is only the first in a two-step process. A more comprehensive evaluation confirms whether the case should be reported and to which public health agency or agencies. This is done by the Reportable Conditions Knowledge Management System, or RCKMS. RCKMS is a decision support service and knowledge management system that holds reporting logic for all public health jurisdictions across the country. RCKMS processes the EICR to determine whether it's reportable. RCKMS looks at the patient's residence address and the address of where the care was provided. In this scenario, both were in Florida, but they could be different. The benefit to this model for both public health and providers is that it saves staff time in cross-jurisdictional reporting and means cases don't fall through the cracks. RCKMS looks up each jurisdiction's reporting logic. This is that second step of evaluating whether the EICR should be sent if anywhere. Um, it compares the EICR, which includes the COVID-19 lab results or problem list items against the public health agency logic and finds a match. RCKMS confirms that this is a reportable event of SARS-CoV-2 and an EICR should be sent to the Florida, Florida Department of Health in this example. RCKMS then sends a decision to AIMS for inclusion in a reportability response called the RR, along with additional information from public health about the condition that is reportable, such as information about outbreaks, treatments, or testing that is available. This output also tells AIMS where to send the EICR and RRs and what to include in them. You will see how providers use the RR in just a minute. Uh, the RR also includes information that is relevant to EHR system administrators, such as errors, warnings, and other machine processable data. Once we have created the RR, we send a copy of it back to the healthcare provider. This happens 100% of the time. If the EICR is reportable, we send the EICR and a duplicate copy of the RR to all of the public health jurisdictions that it should go to. And remember, it can be more than one. For this use case, AIMS and RCKMS provides a set of centralized resources that allow providers and health departments to efficiently exchange data. Duplicating these would be a very difficult and redundant. This saves both healthcare organizations and public health time and effort. They set up one connection from each instance of their EHR versus connecting provider or clinic by clinic individually to each public health agency. Uh, that model of interoperability saves us all time and effort. And now let's look at how Cerna uses a reportability response. So as soon as we receive that reportability response from Ames, we do have that immediate, immediately available to view within the patient's chart. The provider can click on the reportability response and get an, a tangible document that provides them the assurance that their organization is meeting their reporting requirements for COVID-19. 
If we want to view a more structured format of the report, which would likely be used by an infection preventionist, we can open that up from clinical media and we can review the report to see that Dwayne's uh, diagnosis of COVID-19 was deemed reportable by RCKMS and it has been reported to the Florida Department of Health. If we needed to report to another Department of Health, that would be listed here as well. The automation of the ECR process is beneficial to the staff members in that it manually it reduces the amount of time they have manually entering data, as well as decreases the chances for inaccurate reporting. It takes the burden off of the staff member to determine whether or not they have to report and then who to report to. Next, I'll turn it over to the Florida Department of Health to tell us a little bit more about the decision making. Hi, my name is Shelby Flaws with the Florida Department of Health. I'm going to go over how we process the electronic case report. This diagram shows the process of Duane's electronic initial case report submitted to the Florida Department of Health through RCKMS and the Ames platform into our reportable disease surveillance system, Merlin. So as you can see, an ECR app inserts a new row into our ECR table. The ECR processing API is called with a reference to the new ECR row. We then determine if the ECR is of interest to the Florida Department of Health. If it is, we determine if it matches to an existing profile in Merlin. We will match or create a profile appropriately. We process the reportability response messages, which run for each uh, EICR under the ECR. If the reportability response message is of interest, we will determine if there is a case already created and will match or create a case appropriately. Finally, we attach the ECR document, the RR document, and add any processing history. A helpful point Comparing Duane's electronic initial case report compared to more traditional electronic laboratory reporting or paper-based reporting is that the data are available for analysis much earlier with ECR flow into Merlin. To reiterate, the ECRs received are parsed into a database, which determined if there is an existing Merlin record, and if yes, it matches, updates the data on the record, and attaches the HTML. If there's no match, it will create a new record, populate the new record with data, and attach the HTML. At that point, the record is routed to the Merlin task list for follow-up by county staff, where the record is available immediately for analysis. This is meaningful to us, as we can significantly improve the timeliness and intervention and really understand the full picture of Duane's case. This is an overview of what the Miami-Dade County epidemiology team would see when they log on to the reportable disease system Merlin every day to review their cases. And this is where Dwayne's case report would show up for the county health department staff. So right here where it says 276 cases uh, would be where they would click to go and actually look into the case. There are some other um, categories on the screen, which I will go over. Um, there's also the cases and contacts that need to follow up, which would be if a case was received into Merlin and additional follow-up is necessary. There are also a few categories related to missing cases and missing laboratory results, as well as if there are any cases that are non-Florida residents that the county staff would need to follow up on. This is an overview of what the electronic case report would look like for Dwayne's record. For security purposes, we have de-identified this particular screenshot, but um, there would be no black boxes when the EPI staff would look at it in Merlin. This would uh, details the patient demographic information as well as the address information that comes from the electronic initial case report. And then this next screen shows the bottom of the case screen where the HTML documents for the ECR and the reportability response are actually attached to the case for epidemiology staff to review and follow up on. I just want to talk briefly about the benefits of electronic case reporting compared to traditional reporting methods in relation to Dwayne's case.
Traditional reporting is, of course, completely manual. There involves a human to send the faxes to report to the department, and then a human on the other side at the department to actually enter the reportable disease into the surveillance system. Um, this is time consuming as well as error prone. And then on top of that, the epidemiology staff still need to reach out and investigate the case. Uh, with electronic reporting, the manual aspect is completely removed. Additionally, we see more complete demographic and data elements with the EICR. Uh, staff can then shift their focus to investigation and disease prevention. ACR supports the future of public health responses. Duane's case provided us data on comorbidities, vaccine effectiveness, treatment effectiveness, and any isolation or quarantine activities. To touch further on the advantages of ECR over more traditional reporting, such as electronic laboratory reporting, we have noticed an increase in the demographic data elements that are provided to us, especially race and ethnicity, where you can see that for electronic case reporting, we have seen 96% uh, accuracy versus the 65% for electronic laboratory reporting, and for ethnicity, we've seen a 97% accurateness versus the 66% with electronic laboratory reporting. Finally, since we have started receiving ECR, we have seen more than 37,000 ECRs in 2021 alone, just like the one we received for Duane. Currently, eight health systems comprising of 135 facilities to report to the department, up from just 35 in June 2020. I really appreciate your time. Okay, so thank you so much. I think we're ready to wrap up here. This graph is constructed from real-time COVID-19 electronic case report data flowing from EHRs to public health agencies nationwide using the process you just saw. We were able to rapidly add reporting for COVID using ECR at the start of the pandemic for the just under 200 facilities that had implemented ECR at that time. Since that time, we had added over 9,300 facilities using ECR for COVID reporting. And as you can see, this graph clearly and accurately depicts the latest COVID-19 surge due to the Delta variant. In addition to the big picture, you can also see the day-to-day -day fluctuations of reporting numbers. Each report shared electronically contains the detailed case data that public health agency agencies need to help with this latest surge and with other challenges and outbreaks that are still to come. The Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services has recognized the value of electronic case reporting and has made it a requirement in the Promoting Interoperability Program for Hospitals beginning in 2022. There is a similar rule out for comment now for community providers as well. While there have been many challenges in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic, acceleration of implementation of ECR is one good thing that this pandemic response has brought. The burden of reporting has been significant on healthcare and public health, and accomplishing reporting by using electronic exchange of data that is captured in the EHR as part of care is a significant step and reducing the burden of manual reporting for all involved. So that concludes our presentation.